Hey, Flimson Lunch Tree here, back with the Zeiten, as today we're going to be doing an upgrade and commander build video of this tier 8 German battleship slash battle cruiser. Um, if you missed the live commentary videos I had yesterday, make sure to check that out. Link will be at the end of the video if you want to be able to see this build that I currently have uh, in style and in use. So, uh, Zeiten, so what type of Battleship is Zeiten. Is she a sniper? Is she more of a mid range? Or is she like this brawling battleship? Um, and Zeiten is definitely a brawling battleship um, because of her secondaries. So she has a lot of things uh, going for her that kind of uh, encourage the brawling battleship play. But the first part of the battle, you probably want to chill out more in mid range, like let's say 13, 14, 15 kilometers. Um, unless, you know, enemy team, of course, is weak on the flank and that allows you to push up and get more of your secondaries into use. Um, because when we're looking at secondary armament, uh, she's got a lot of secondary armaments uh, going for her, kind of what this line is known for as you build up to the Schlieffen. She's also got these 12-kilometer uh, range torpedoes, 4x4, uh, four four, uh, just two racks on each side, um, but just six 406-millimeter guns. So a nice uh, larger gun caliber capacity versus the Bismarck at tier 8. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Bismarck has 380s off the top of my head. And I really don't want to get that wrong in the midst of the video if I have that incorrect. Yeah, 380s. Uh, so Zeiten has just uh, a lot of good things going for her. Um, one of the downsides, I would say the most notable downside, would be her armor. Um, so she is nowhere near tanky as something like the Bismarck. Um, 27 millimeter bow, 27 millimeter stern. Granted, it's not a very large stern. The deck is 32 millimeter. Uh, then your armor belt, uh, you have 170, which descends to 250, and then even lower at 350. Um, Bismarck is just going to be, it's more tanky overall. Granted, you still have this 60 millimeter uh, fore end and aft end armor belt. Uh, so that is something very helpful, 60 millimeter. So some people might shoot too low and it doesn't actually penetrate like let's say destroyers or something, but they just wanna go for uh, this nose section. Let's strip away some of her armor scheme. Uh, it's kind of funky <laughs> just with these curves when you're looking at it as you take things away. So it doesn't actually look like she has a turtle belt. Her, yeah. Um, so what we have going on is here is a very long citadel. So normally it would just cut off maybe just as it passes the front turret, but this one actually goes out even further. Um, 350 millimeter citadel armor and some torpedo bulkhead uh, protection going on. So it looks like we're, mm, we waterline? Almost, yeah, it's like waterline. You can see the waves when they're coming up. So waterline citadel. Um, and then if you're turning out, of course, you're going to be lifting up the side of the ship and uh, exposing yourself. So a pretty long citadel goes all the way past the rear turret, of course, of course but um, so you can get wrecked. Um, you have to be mindful and you just have to be mindful that she's not a tanky battleship. Like when you need to, uh, things get thick, you need to disengage, you need to go dark. So um, that is Zeiten for you. So let's go ahead and talk about her modules. Uh, so uh, four and six millimeter main battery guns, you get six of them. Uh, reload time of 22.5 seconds, very good. I would have a lot of issues if Wargaming was like, we're gonna do 28, 30 second reload time. It's like, no, if I only have six guns, I wanna be able to fire more uh, quickly. And this calls into mind more of like a, a battle cruiser, uh, if you will. Uh, 180 degree turn time, we have 30 seconds with how the ship is right now. Uh, when you go up from the hall A to hall B, you're gonna get more improved uh, or better improved survivability. Uh, torpedoes get up improvements, AA goes up, your maneuverability goes up. Um, so that's just good all around. So that is the first thing you wanna go for it. So I'm gonna recommend you uh, do in the Zeiten. Your torpedoes, uh, they have a reload time of 110 seconds, uh, torpedo range of 12 kilometers, and they hit pretty decent for 16,000. But they're pretty slow, torpedoes, 50 knots. So they don't get anywhere in a hurry, so you just have to keep that in mind. Long travel time. Your gunfire control system stock is 16.4, but then you're able to bump that up to 18. Very helpful. Again, go for the hull B first, then go for 
the main battery firing range because in general if you're able to improve your health especially in terms of modules you really want to go for that first overall then maximum speed 31 knots but we can bump that up with 32.6 knots or if we felt cheeky and put brisk on our commander so we'll look at uh, that here shortly in terms of her upgrades uh, the first uh, slot i have the main armaments modification one uh, this reduces the risk of the main battery becoming incapacitated in torpedoes by negative 20 percent their survivability improves by plus 50 percent for both main battery and torpedoes and if one of them should get knocked out the repair time is negative 20 percent for both the main battery and the torpedo tube repair time you may have noticed in yesterday's video that i believe in both battles we had our torpedoes incapacitated not permanently but they will uh, be likely to draw attention to them um, and that has to do with their location. So a lot of ships are aiming for like this midsection on your ship. Uh, so that results in torpedoes getting knocked out and they're not like hidden. They're just out here on the deck. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I like running um, this main arms modification one. Um, you also could have auxiliary arms modification one, which improves your secondary battery survivability, which I think you also saw in your this video. We had some secondaries get knocked out. Um, so improves their survivability, but also their AA mount survivability. So uh, you could go for this. This might be something maybe I consider more on Ruprecht and Schlieffen. I don't know yet. I'll have to see until uh, we get there. But of course, if you want to just change them out, you can sell them uh, for uh, really cheap, swap things out. Uh, but for now, I'm kind of doing this because you only have three turrets and you have torpedoes that are vulnerable and tend to get knocked out. Um, magazine modification one, you don't need risk of your ship's magazine detonating negative 70% because you just want to be running with the Juliet Charlie combat signal, which completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. Second slot, what I have um, now is the damage control system modification one. Risk of catching fire, negative 5%. Risk of flooding, negative 3%. I would discourage engine room protection. The ultimate pick though, I would say, would have to be the hydroacoustic search modification one. That is a special upgrade. So your action time of your hydroacoustic search goes up by plus 20%. So if I click on it, it's gonna take me into the armory and I can purchase it for 17,000 coal. You do get a coupon um, here, 25% off, which would bring it down to 12,500 coal. So I recommend picking up these special upgrades with the coupon. I just pick up one once a month and not blowing a full amount of coal. Um, I just haven't done it because I'm waiting to use that coupon for some like Prince Ruprecht and Schlieffen definitely going to run it on because I don't know how often I'm going to be playing the Zeiten yet since I'm, uh, I fancy my Bismarck at tier 8. For the third slots, definitely want to go for that secondary battery modification one. Um, improves your secondary battery firing range by plus 20% and maximum secondary battery shell dispersion negative 20%. Um, so this helps us extend that secondary range out to currently 10 to 9. I throw on the Mike Yankee Sulka 6. Don't know how to pronounce that. And we're going to go up to 11.5 kilometers. Uh, note this also uh, increase, reduces our dispersion, tighter grouping, and also our reload time. So without it, 3 seconds. With it, 2 9. And then our other armament here is, is going to vary. So 7 3, 7 7. Um, seven, seven, so seven, three here. Um, so definitely want to be running this combat signal here, uh, in connection with this, uh, upgrade. Um, otherwise, I mean, your turrets turn already pretty fast, you know, 30 seconds, 180 degree turn time. I uh, don't see a need for that. Otherwise, if you want something different, you could go for aiming systems modification one to just get a slight buff to your secondaries and help the torpedo tubes out a little bit, but it's mainly that dispersion. Uh, I get a negative 7% on the vertical and horizontal dispersion uh, of your guns. So you could go with that, but really, if you're playing this line, this ship is all about the brawling, getting in close with your secondaries when opportunities arrive. This is what you want to run. Um, also, the damage control system modification 2 in the fourth slot. This reduces the fire extinction time and flooding recovery time by negative 15%. So it gives you uh, some more survivability uh, since you are a battle cruiser, you're not this tanky as a typical battleship at tier 8. So I like running this. 
Um, I really don't see why you'd run some of these others. Maybe if you're wanting to accelerate and get quickly and move up from being a sand steel and such, you could run propulsion modification one. Uh, but usually when you're not juke, you're not trying to juke in a battleship, right? So I still lean to this first and foremost. For the fifth slot, I'm going to recommend you take the concealment system modification one. So we, I don't know if we have con concealment on our commander. I'll take a peek. We do not have concealment yet. Um, so with how it is right now, we're 13-3. And ultimately, yes, we are going to be building for concealment on uh, this guy. We want him to have it. Uh, so this is an example. If we had concealment now, it'd get us down to 12 kilometers, which is the same range as our torpedoes. Uh, so that's pretty ideal, but I went for the other uh, four-point skill first because I wanted an additional damage control team and repair party, but we'll get there here in just a moment. Otherwise, uh, you could also have torpedo lookout system. This increases the assured uh, acquisition range of torpedoes, 1.8, and you stack this on with something like hydroacoustic search and the commander skill, you can be picking up torpedoes pretty far away. Um, right now with hydro, it's 3.8 kilometers. So it's just timing your hydro uh, well when possible um, is why I have the concealment system modification one versus taking torpedo lookout system. But it is an option, but I'm still gonna encourage you to take concealment system modification one. In terms of the consumables, so we have fast damage control team. Um, not too many battleship lines have this. You know, you have this on the Russian battleships as an example. Um, but your consumable action time is 11 seconds. Your reload time is 40 seconds. Um, so you can pump these out pretty quickly if you're in the heat of battle. You need some additional um, heals, you know, uh, or <laughs> additional. Damage control team is more quickly available for those double fires and such that get set. Um, so this helps improve your survivability when you're in those uh, prolonged engagements tied with your repair party. So right now, HP per second is 314. We mount the India Delta combat signal, jumps up to 377 per second. Action time of 30.8 seconds, reload time of 80 seconds, so pretty standard minute 20. And we have four of these. Um, stock, you're only going to have... Uh, three of these and four of these, but we took a commander skill to give us the additional uh, healing possibilities and additional chances of being able to put out um, fires, floods, and uh, repair modules. Then you have hydroacoustic search. So Wargaming nerfed this. It used to be detection of ships at six kilometers. It was a little bit too OP for this line, so they backed it off a little bit to 5.5. Um, detection of torpedoes, 3.8. Action time, 110 seconds, which you can extend if you take the special upgrade uh, for Hydroacoustic Search Modification 1 in slot 2 of your upgrades. And reload time of 120 seconds, and you only get 3 of these, okay? Uh, so you have to utilize them well here on Zyton. Um, other things I would be running with the combat signals would be, I mean, ideally, this would be what I'd look to run uh, here on Zyton, uh, fully equipped. So let's go ahead and dive in and look at our commander. Uh, so this is a commander I've respect, uh, reutilizing him uh, for a particular skill in mind, which we'll discuss here in just a moment. But first, uh, I'm going to recommend you take the preventive maintenance defense skill. Reason why this is good is it reduces risk of your main turrets, your torpedo tubes, steering gears, and engine becoming incapacitated. Um, and you saw how often our <laughs> torpedoes kept getting knocked out. And we really want to keep our main turrets active. You know, if I lose a, the front turret and I'm pushing in, you know, I instantly lose all my main battery firing power in the front, where two thirds of my firepower are in the rear in terms of the main battery guns. So um, I want to keep these going. I want to keep my torpedoes up if I'm able to um, do a torpedo drive by on an enemy ship. Uh, for a second point skill, I would recommend you take the IFHE skill. What this does is it improves the main battery HE shell armor penetration capability by plus 25%. But particularly why we want this skill is for the secondary battery, um, also by plus 25%. So um, right now, if you didn't mount this skill, okay, your penetration capacity uh, for the 150 millimeter guns, uh, the f um, there's two sets of 150 millimeter guns on this ship would be 38 millimeters on the 8x2 105 millimeter guns it'd be 26 
on the 4x2 150 millimeter guns um, in a different mounting, I guess is what it is. Uh, they are, oh, it's a 4x2, so the 4x1s. Uh, um, those have a penetration capacity of 38 millimeters. Now, when we take IFHE, uh, our HE penetration capacity for the, um, I did this, I guess, a bit backwards here. So for the 4x1s, it jumps up to 47 millimeters. For the 105s, it jumps up to 32 millimeters, and that's really what we're looking for. There's a lot of ships at tier eight, and maybe even some of the ones that but tier 10 have uh, standard 32 millimeter armor. So without this, you're only pinning uh, 26 millimeters with these guns. And these are your fastest, faster reloading guns, 2.9 seconds. Um, so to be able to pin at 32 millimeters means we're gonna be doing a lot more damage overall, um, raw damage uh, at the expense of our fire chances being uh, reduced by half. So then you can see there, 2.5% chance of causing a fire. Um, the four by twos, those also, uh, these are gonna go up to 47 millimeters. So 47, 47, um, 30, uh, 32. So this is what we really wanna go for. So more raw damage output uh, there with those secondary. So that's what we're picking up. Next, I uh, would recommend picking up the long range secondary battery shells. So this is what's helping extend that range. You know, max, we can get out to 11.5. Then for a 10 pointer, just go ahead and go for the secondaries first, right? Um, this has the permanent effect of your standard, your secondary battery load time, negative 10%, your dispersion, negative 10%, and then they can be activated over the course of 45 seconds. You reach maximum efficiency of a dispersion of negative 50%. So combined with the permanent effect and they can be activated, you're getting negative 60% uh, dispersion. So even a lot tighter groupings on your shells. Um, so this is how I'd recommend you go for your 10 point line. And then I wanted those additional damage control teams and those repair parties. So what I went for next was the emergency repair expert. Your mileage may vary. You may decide that you want to be rocking the concealment um, where it gets you down to 12 kilometers. Um, but I really wanted an additional um, repair party and damage control team. My play style is I really try to do my best to be alive for the last half of the battle. And you may have taken some damage and you just want to repair more things back. Um, so that's why I've taken the emergency repair expert um, here. Um, so your damage control party consumable action time plus 10%. So we went from 10 seconds to 11 seconds. We got an additional charge. Our repair party consumable action time went up 10%. Uh, so I added 2.8 seconds instead of it being 28 seconds. Now 38, 30.8 seconds. And we went from three charges to four charges. So uh, this skill all in all is really good. Um, next, what I'm going to recommend to you would be to go ahead and pick up the concealment expert. Um, because you're this more squishy uh, German battleship, when you need it to go dark and disengage, this is just so helpful. Um, especially trying to get in those positions where you can surprise the enemy. Um, with Zeiten here, uh, you have a... 0.5 kilometer window of when your secondaries um, take into action. Um, so that's what I recommend here. And you can see that that means I don't get to take another four point skill such as fire prevention. Um, so maybe you're wondering, you know, flimsy, why don't you want to take fire prevention? Well, fire prevention is such a good skill, but one of the trade offs here when you take the concealment um, and you take the emergency repair expert uh, versus fire prevention expert is that you have those fast damage control teams. You have those damage control teams that are coming back up every 40 seconds. Um, and so that is helpful. Um, so if you do get that double fire, um, you know, you can click through this damage control team. And then if you get a flood, let's say 20, 30 seconds later or something, you're gonna have it up in 10 to 20 seconds already. So um, that is more or less why. Uh, I lean towards wanting to invest in taking the concealment expert here uh, on this commander versus taking fire prevention. Fire prevention, what it's going to do is it takes the risk of catching fire down to negative 10%. And instead of having four fire set on your ship, you can only have three fire set on your ship. Um, fire prevention is not a bad uh, skill by any means. It's really good. But I'm just 
kind of keeping in mind what they're offering here with the ship and wanting to build into that concealment of having 12 kilometers at tier 8. Um, it's pretty good for a battleship, so. Um, then after this, uh, where are we left with? We have three points remaining. Um, so in my mind, I want to take a drone rush. And as I lose health, my main battery is going to be reloading faster. My torpedo is going to be reloading faster. My continuous AA damage goes up. But then also my secondary battery reload time is reduced. Uh, so that could mean turning something of like the uh, 2.9 second reloading time to maybe 2.6, 2.5 seconds. And if you even had Luchins mounted on your Zeiton and you activated those 100 uh, secondary battery hits, it's likely um, that, uh, you know, you're going to drop your reload time of your secondaries down even uh, quicker. Um, so this is the build that I have in mind here. Now, there can be some discussion for well, what else would you recommend? What else could you take? Um, I've seen players take Brisk before um, because when you're rocking the really good concealment, it means you're getting around the map uh, even more quickly. So plus 10%. So if we take the Sierra Mike and we have 32.6, then that means we're adding on 10%. And I'm just going to do the math so I don't get this wrong. But you're uh, adding on 3.26 uh, speed. Okay, Just move the decimal over, right? Um, I just wanted to be sure so you guys don't shoot me if I get it wrong. So you're, you're almost going 36 knots, uh, 35.8, 35.9. And so you can kind of book around the map pretty quickly uh, when you're running brisk. Um, so as I said, I've seen players run that, and then maybe that means... You're doing emergency repair specialists, so your repair parties and the damage control teams are coming up even quickly, more quickly off cooldown. Or you could take gun feeder, uh, main battery shell type switching time, negative 40%, so uh, you can switch between a high explosive and armor piercing a bit more quickly. But if I was going to do brisk, I would go for something like this. Yeah. Um, the other thing one could do is you could play a very aggro um, build here. Um, you could take the close quarters combat. So this increases your main battery reload time after an enemy ship has been spotted within the firing range of your ship's secondary battery range. Uh, so 11.5. Changes to the secondary battery firing range included by the effect of temporary modifiers are not taken into account. So they could be under 20 second reload time here on Zyton once we get into secondary range on ships. But with Zyton, I don't recommend this skill so much just because you only have six guns um, and you may be, just by how you're positioned, you're not able to get all six guns firing at the same time. Um, and then if I was going to do that, then probably what I would be doing would be a uh, brisk, like very, very aggro build, but at the same time, uh, we're def building into our defense here. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to recommend the um, tried and true. Uh, well, this isn't necessarily the tried and true. Tried and true would be more like having fire prevention. Uh, but this, uh, I think, is ideal uh, for here on the Zeiton. So that's going to wrap up this video and bring us to a close. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you are subscribed, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you're running on the, your Zeiton in the comments and what you have found to be helpful uh, here on this ship. So until next time, take care.